Hi everybody and welcome to today's teen talk. We're very glad to have Ashling Daly, uh, who's a secondary school teacher on today. So I'll introduce Ashling in a second. This is another one of our teen talks that we've been bringing to you, organized by Cork County Council and funded by Healthy Ireland through Pubble and it's overseen by our LTDC in Cork County. My name is Niall O'Callaghan and I'm the Healthy Ireland Coordinator for Cork County Council. So delighted to have Ashton Daly on today uh, for a number of reasons, mainly because she is a teacher on, and in contact with Leaving Cert students. So we'll talk a little bit on that as well. But um, Ashton also runs lots of other uh, interesting um, sources of information, which are of a lot of benefit to a lot of people. Uh, she runs a very interesting podcast called Thrive for Life and has a very active Instagram following as well. Uh, which uh, gives a lot of benefit to a lot of people. Um, so, Ashling, delighted to have you on today's Teen Talk. Thanks a million, Niall, for having me. I'm delighted to be on this. Great. Well, I think, I suppose, the, the first thing to get into straight away, probably of most interest to the teens, which, which this talk was originally aimed for. So, for, for today, let's, or for this few moments, let's just focus on the Leaving Cert students at the moment, because it has been a very turbulent time for them in terms of the uncertainty in that and I know you've been you, you're a teacher of Leaving Cert students so can you tell us a little bit about what they're going through and, and what how, how you have guided them at the moment? Yeah so obviously it's a really difficult time for Leaving Certs. This time is really challenging for Leaving Certs anyway um, but obviously they've the added uncertainty and upheaval and all of the changes that are going on right now so it is really challenging for them and I think the biggest thing is the uncertainty and the unknown and it's very difficult for them to kind of focus on what's within their control because there's so much unknown and uncertainty so one thing I've been suggesting is just drawing this out before we started um, for students that are struggling I suppose the two main things are dealing with the uncertainty and the second thing is maybe motivation, finding that motivation from within when you don't have a teacher standing over your shoulder saying, do this, do this, do this now, and moving from class to class and having that structure. So the first thing, I suppose, you know, dealing with the uncertainty and the unknown and that can easily consume your thoughts. What can be really helpful is to think about uh, these three circles that I've drawn here. I hope you can see them. But if you imagine that in the center here is the circle of control. This is your circle of influence and this is everything else. So what you really want to try and put your attention on is what's within your control and what's within your influence and then letting go of whatever is out of your control, everything else. So there's a lot that's out of our control right now. The dates of the exams, we don't know those yet. How they're going to be marked, we can't say how that's going to happen. And we also don't know if they're going to change what's in the written exams and all of that so that's out of our control but what's within your control as a student if you're watching this is how you manage yourself how you manage your time how you choose to fuel your body so eating nourishing foods and hydration staying connected with your friends so your friends are also going through exactly what you're going through dealing with all of this unknown and uncertainty and staying connected with them, chatting to them often and talking about what you're facing and what you're dealing with. And Minister McHugh made a good point about pacing yourself. So this is a longer run in now to the exams than we'd be used to. And he did suggest taking some time off over Easter and some time off again in June. And that is really important. I would recommend that myself. I'd recommend that to my Leaving Cert students when he made the announcement. I did drop them an email just to suggest maybe take the second week off and I extended the deadline of the work that I had assigned for Easter and not to feel guilty about taking time off. These are very strange, unprecedented times and productivity does look very different for everyone right now. And it, I suppose we're all going through a bit of grief for normality right now and that is a real challenge. And um, so I suppose what's within your control is how you're going to manage yourself and your day when you do get back to your structure and your routine and your study now um, and setting yourself small manageable goals is really important so rather than just sitting down at the beginning of the day and saying i'm going to get all of this done pick out what are actual tangible small goals that you can tick off at the end and feel that sense of accomplishment so even if it's just writing two paragraphs of your english essay 
brainstorming your history essay, you know, actual goals that are specific and that are small and manageable and that you can actually tick off. That can be really, really helpful. And finding some kind of a structure or routine that works for you is really important because what happens otherwise is you feel like you're all over the place. And then when you're supposed to be relaxing, you're thinking I should be studying because I didn't do enough study today. And you're just having this internal battle constantly. So trying to find a way that you can avoid that. I remember what that was like myself. I, I found it very difficult to study and stay motivated when I was a leading cert student. So I can't imagine what students are going through right now that might be in that position having so much time at home in the run up to the exams and luckily we will be having face to face time with students before the exams and I'm really happy about that. Uh, so trying to find a structure or routine that works for you. So for me, what I'm finding at the moment is getting up in the morning, doing my 10 minute meditation, getting some movement and then starting my day. So whether it's a walk outside, that seems to be my favorite thing to do in the morning or a bit of yoga. So finding some structure, routine and trying to get to bed at the same time, get up at the same time. And that really, really helps getting that sleep routine as well, rather than just saying, I'll see what tomorrow brings and I'll stay up to one o'clock this morning watching Netflix because I can, who cares, I'll do it. So trying to find that routine for yourself. Um, and I think communicating with your teachers is really important too. So if you are struggling, drop them an email, let them know what you're struggling with, if there's something that you need support with, if you feel like you've been given too much work or too little work and ask for more. You know, I think we're all feeling our way through this. This is unknown territory for students and teachers. And I think just staying in communication, your teachers are there to support you in any way that they can. Um, obviously every teacher has a different set of circumstances, but every teacher wants to support their students as best they can. So obviously some teachers might have small children at home and they can give as much time. Other teachers have more time. Everyone has different circumstances, but I think at the end of the day, we all want what's best for our students. We all want to support them however we can. So we're all humans and don't be afraid to drop your teacher an email and keep the, the lines of communication open. Because what I find is when you're assigning work back and forth, you're not seeing their expression or their faces. Sometimes in the classroom situation, if I said, okay, I'm gonna give you this essay due in three days, you might read from their expression on their faces that maybe they have a lot of other work assigned from other teachers. And I'd be able to pick up on that cue and say, is that too much for you right now? And they'd say, yeah, because we have this going on but we don't have that face-to-face -face connection right now. So I think keeping the communication open with your teachers is really important. So keep in touch with them. Um, so yeah, the, the unknown, the uncertainty, keep your focus and your attention on what's within your control and what's within your influence. And that will help you to feel a lot less stressed and less anxious. It's when we're focusing on what's out of our control that the anxiety is going to rise within us. So keep focusing on that. Um, one other tip I would suggest for students who are trying to do study at this time is there, there are lots of great apps out there. One of them is Forest app for productivity and for focused time. And the Forest app, I think it's free. I downloaded it myself to use when I'm correcting um, students' work because I find I can get distracted by my phone. So it's an app where you uh, set a timer and you could set 20, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. And in that time, a tree starts to grow on your phone. And if you leave the app, you go into Instagram or go into some other app, uh, the tree will die. And the more trees that you build in your, far, your, in your virtual forest, they actually plant real trees in Africa. So you can feel like you're getting work done yourself, but you're also contributing to the environment and the greater world in some way while you're doing that. And there was one other thing that I wanted to mention for Leaving Cert students is that this is a real time, an opportunity, I suppose, to learn more about yourself. As I was saying to you now before we started recording this, as a teenager myself in school, I wouldn't have thought for a minute that I would end up being a teacher. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was never very motivated. My school reports always said, could try better, could do better. And the reason was that I didn't really have a sense of purpose. I didn't have that drive. Like some of my friends knew they wanted to be an accountant, a physiotherapist, and they were really focused, really driven to succeed and 
meet their goals and get their college course. But for me, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I just kind of sailed along, did the bare minimum, found it hard to stay focused and didn't have that motivation from within. And even after school, I did an arts degree. I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. And it wasn't until 2011 when I was in Australia and I went to see a talk by Dr. John Martini, and he spoke about values. I'd never considered what my values were before. And that was a real light bulb moment for me. And it was a real turning point for me. And it was the first time that I stopped to think about what my values were. And it actually gave me such uh, a sense of purpose in life. I realized that I really value helping other people and that leadership was something that was important to me. And as a result, then I decided to do teaching and it was the first time I ever got a first class honors top marks in anything because I was so motivated from within because what I was doing was completely aligned with what was important to me. So if you're a student who is sitting at home now watching this and you have no idea what you want to do, you can't picture what your future looks like, this might be a great time to stop and think about what's important to me. What are my values? And once you get a clear sense of that, it might be a lot easier for you to get a picture of where you want to go with your life. And there's a way that you can do this very easily on Dr. John D. Martini's website. Um, I shared the link with you after this, Niall, but you can do a free values determination process. It takes about 40, 45 minutes. You just answer a lot of questions and it, ends up giving you what your top values are and I think that's a really powerful exercise to do so they would be my main tips I suppose for leading cert students right now and just be kind and compassionate to yourself if you are a leading cert student this is a really difficult challenging time and remember that productivity might look a little bit different right now it might not look the exact same as it did when you were in school and just try to pace yourself. And as Minister McHugh said, taking breaks is really important too, not feeling like you need to keep driving on from here until July or August. You'll burn yourself out if you try to do that. So make sure you give yourself some rest and try to get some kind of a structure or routine in your day so that you don't end up sitting around feeling guilty when you're supposed to be relaxing and having fun or resting. Um, and using an app like Forest App can be really helpful for doing that focused productivity and um, focused study time I suppose. So yes, yeah, so they'd be my main tips for the leading certs now. Wow, there are some fantastic tips and th thank you for sharing those and have you got you know feedback from any of your students who have tried some of these areas you know have they come back to you saying yeah that's really working for me? Yeah well I had a video call with my leading certs just before Easter and we'll do, be doing an awful lot more of that I would say now going forward. I think everyone thought it was a shorter period that we wouldn't have that face-to-face -face contact with our students. So now I think checking in with our students, it's even more so for their mental health and strategies to cope with what's going on right now as opposed to talking about course content. I think we can do that pretty well back and forth, sending work back and forth, but it's the checking in with them for those little chats to let them offload what their problems are right now, what they're struggling with and as adults, teachers with experience, we all have different unique things that we can offer them that might support and help them. But yeah, I've, I've had some feedback from students even, I've shared some of that stuff on Instagram too, and I've had some feedback from people that are trying to study in that, that have definitely found the circles very useful. So the circle of control, the circle of influence, and everything else I like to call it, it's called the circle of concern. Uh, but keep putting your focus and your attention on what's within my control, what can I actually control and influence? Because if we keep looking at what's outside and what we can't influence, the anxiety is going to rise up and that's what we want to really work on, keeping that at bay. So remember that you do have control over a lot of things right now about how you manage yourself, what you choose to fuel yourself with, staying hydrated, moving your body, staying connected with your friends and trying to find some kind of a structure routine that works for you so that you can have that structured focus time but also the really important relax switch off read a book watch netflix call your friends having that time where you don't feel guilty is really really important as well mm. you, you mentioned there as well and it, it's a, been a common theme that has, has come up in these thoughts and it is 
you know, looking at just what we're in control of ourselves. And, you know, we've heard mentioned in other talks about, you know, just being not being your environment or not being your classroom, not being your school, just being yourself and who you are. And you mentioned very well as well about having those self values. And I know like you, you've done lots of other study in different areas. You've trained as a personal trainer, you've studied in nutrition. I know that you're studying in coaching at the moment. So, you know, tell us about those things that, that you would have learned through those learnings in terms of self-compassion that might be of benefit to, to others at this time. Um, yeah, so like self-compassion is something that I'm, I'm really passionate about and I'm a big advocate of it. Uh, I would have been my own worst enemy for years and years, constantly being hard on myself and beating myself up over things. And ultimately, it just leads to a miserable way of living and I think it's so important to be compassionate with yourself and um, I was mentioning to you before this that I'm a master at distracting from uncomfortable emotions and um, for years I would have struggled with binge eating it's something that I'm still working on managing it does come up time to time for me again um, and there are different ways that people try to numb or distract from uncomfortable emotions it could be scrolling on your phone, online shopping, busyness. That was another good one for me, keeping so busy that you don't have to feel any uncomfortable emotions. Um, for others, it might be alcohol or gambling. There are lots of different ways that people try to avoid or numb uncomfortable emotions. And I suppose part of being human is that we do experience all of the emotions, the whole range of them. And when we try to numb or distract from the uncomfortable ones like stress or overwhelm or sadness or loneliness we can't actually selectively numb emotions we numb everything so when we numb the lows we numb the highs so what i would have found for years is that i didn't laugh a lot and i didn't cry a lot i just kind of went through life just at this level kind of field and i wasn't experiencing emotions or allowing myself to experience emotions and I think it's really important for people to just allow themselves to feel whatever is arising for them right now and asking, what do I actually need in this moment? So for me, if I find myself turning back to food as a way of coping when I feel stressed about what's going on right now or feel the anxiety rising or feel a bit overwhelmed if I'm not feeling like I've been productive enough or whatever it is, I check in with myself and think, what am I actually hungry for here? What is it that I actually need in this moment? And it's so important to allow yourself to feel your feelings. They say you have to feel to heal. And it's, it's so true. And um, I was saying that I was out walking the other day and I saw buses passing and they were empty and the trains were empty. And then I saw a coffin in a hearse passing up the road. And it just really struck me what's actually going on. I feel like I was in a, but I'm in a bubble a lot of the time because my life is good right now and embracing the slower pace of life. But when I saw that, I was out, out walking and there's no one around. And I actually allowed myself to cry over feeling the sadness of seeing that because that's the reality right now. A lot of people are dying and it is sad and it's okay to feel sad about that when that sadness arises. And it's about letting yourself just feel it, allow it to be released in whatever way it is and moving on and being compassionate with yourself i didn't allow myself to feel emotions for a very long time and it's not very healthy to keep pushing down the emotion and not allowing yourself to feel it and um, and being compassionate with yourself is really important so right now you might be looking at instagram or facebook and seeing that this person has like done 10 workouts in three days and they're getting abs and you might be sitting at home with a bar of chocolate thinking, oh God, what am I doing? And it's okay, you know, we all need self-compassion right now. And if, you know, uh, if we keep beating ourselves up, it's only going to lead back into a cycle. So it's about acceptance and self-compassion um, and just focusing on yourself and what you need to support yourself right now and not looking externally. And if you find that you're scrolling on your phone too much and it's not really supporting you, something that I've done lately and it's really helped me is I've put a, a little jewellery box under the stairs and my phone fits in there very nicely. And if I find myself scrolling and all of a sudden I realise I'm tense, I'm stressed, I'm feeling like crap about myself because I'm looking at someone else baking every recipe out of some cookbook in the last week. 
um, or doing so many workouts, I just put my phone into that box and then it's a conscious decision to go back and take it out when I want to take it out. I did use that screen time feature that alerts you when you've used so many hours on social media, but I found that I've ignored that and just bypassed that and said, yeah, who cares? So I find the box is a really helpful tool. I hope that answers the, the question that you were asking there now. I feel I may have gone off on a tangent, but... Well, it's, it's a great tangent because I think what you've got into there is a lot of what all of us are experiencing at the moment. And I think some of the things you have recommended there will be helpful to everybody, particularly in this situation. So thank you for that. Um, maybe just one thing before we finish up, and it is just to go back to students at the moment as well. So, you know, us as adults, or particularly parents, is there anything that you might recommend to help support um, leaving cert students at this time or what we can do to encourage them and help them? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I hadn't really thought about that, about what parents could be doing right now. Uh, but I suppose just keeping the communication open and um, yeah, I suppose just supporting them however you can. Um, I'm not really sure actually. I, I hadn't really thought about how parents can support. Uh, I guess just being there for them, being there as a, an ear to listen. I suppose none of us have gone through a life situation like this really before. Parents won't have. Um, so it's all unknown territory and maybe I guess it's about not feeling like you have to have all the answers for your children. You know, um, so if you have a, a child that's, or daughter or son or daughter that's doing their leaving cert right now, this is all unknown territory for everyone. And I suppose it's about being a listening ear as opposed to having all of the answers. Because sometimes the answers that we give might be the right ones. And I think we all have something within us that knows what's best for us. So sometimes it's about just being that listening ear, sitting down, cup of tea, no distractions, no phones, and just saying, how are you finding this? And is there anything I can do to support you? And then just listening. I suppose we don't have to have the answers because none of us have the answers with, about how to cope with what's going on right now because this is unknown territory for everyone. Yeah, I think that's really, really important. It is just that communication element because everybody is going through this for the very first time. And we touched on it previously there as well. So because this is unprecedented and the fact that we might all be learning more about ourselves, whether it's adults or teenagers or whoever it is, you know, we're, we're learning how we might be coping with this situation. Is this an opportunity for everybody, for both students and adults to learn more about themselves in, in this time? Definitely, yeah. I think we, we all start to see some of our strengths and our weaknesses at this time. And it's a really good time to tune in and, and look inwards and writing or journaling I think can really be helpful for this so even asking the question what's working well for me now and what's not working so well and kind of looking at what what you are doing well and what's working for you and what you could change and um, also as I mentioned the values that's equally as important for adults as it is for young people and um, so using this opportunity to get really clear on what is important to me and our values change over the course of our life they're constantly changing and it's worthwhile checking in doing that values determination process even twice a year could be a good idea like if someone has children all of a sudden their values are going to change or if someone you know if life circumstances change our values are always changing and especially at this time and I think people might be having a realization of what's actually important to them. There are probably a lot of people spending a lot more time with their family when their work would have been, you know, the main focus for them and maybe realizing going forward what they want to bring into the new normal, I suppose, what's worthwhile leaving behind and what's worthwhile bringing into their future. So looking at your values is really, really helpful, I think. Um, and also, like for me, I've mentioned about binge eating and difficult relationship with food. And for me, I'm really seeing this as an opportunity this time to really face it and see, can I actually come out of this situation feeling a lot more comfortable in terms of my relationship with food and being able to manage my emotions better, being able to recognize what I'm feeling and sit with it and allow difficult emotions to come up and 
Um, so yeah, I think this is a real opportunity. You know, in every crisis, there is an opportunity. Um, and it is an opportunity for us to reflect and look inward a little bit now as well. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Um, it, was, it was so good of you to share your own story as well, because, you know, you, you have been through some of those challenges in the past yourself and to see what can come out on the other side, because, you know, what you do now, you know, through your everyday work on Instagram is of great benefit to people. I see lots of people who are helped by that. Ashley, thank you so much for, for joining us today. I know that a lot of people have got a lot of tips from that as well as some tips there for, for students. So thank you very much for joining us on Teen Talk. No problem. And there's one other thing that I just say um, that just came to me when I was, I hadn't really thought about parents and how they could support uh, their children right now. But um, I said about being the listening ear and I know that maybe going for a walk and being the listening ear then as opposed to sitting down at the kitchen table saying how can I support you because it can be very difficult to talk when it's face to face and making that eye contact and some young people might find it easier when you're out for a walk and you're not looking directly at each other you're side by side and you're the listening ear there that things might just come up and come out more naturally so maybe suggesting do you want to go for a walk for 20 minutes and not making it this I'm going to sit down now and you're going to tell me how you're feeling, you know, and just allowing it to feel a bit more natural. It might be easier for people to talk when they're walking together. So that was something else that I just wanted to add in before we finish up. Yeah, thank you so much for coming back in with that because it is, it is such a big help. It, as we're moving, as we're exercising, it builds the endorphins within us as well. So we might feel a little bit more like sharing. So thanks very much for, for sharing that, Ashley. Thanks very much for having me on, Niall.